Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use Duck by Devious Machines to get some seriously good side chaining happening. Duck comes with a number of incredible features that make side chaining not only easy, but very, very powerful. And that's what I'm gonna set out to show you how to do today. I'm not gonna be covering every feature inside of Duck, but I am gonna show you how I use it the most. Duck is a Dynamics processor that uses an LFO for volume shaping. You can easily move these around, add new points. You can even change that by right clicking and change the type of slope. You can easily change that by clicking right there. You can see here we got exponential if you want kind of brick wall ha to happen. If you hold down shift and move these around, you'll snap to the grid. You can change the grid size right here if you wanted to. And this is just going to repeat by default by the speed of your choosing you set down here. So in fact, let me go ahead and drop a new instance of duck on this channel. I've just got it on this base right here. And this is kind of the default. So we're getting kind of that side chain pumping happening, which is really easy. If you have like a four to the floor beat and you just want to have that side chain pumping, boom, there you go. You can make it a little bit shorter if you want, make the cur curve a little bit more gradual, things like that, very easy to do. But where duck becomes more and more powerful is the trigger mode down here. If I click the trigger mode, you can see that we have repeat, which is what it's on right now. We can trigger the envelope by MIDI or side chain. So I'm actually going to go ahead and choose side chain. And inside of Ableton Live, it's very simple to get sidechain input into any third-party plugin now. You just gotta click right here. I'm gonna go from the drum beat. So now what's gonna happen is this volume envelope is going to be triggered every time the threshold is crossed. So let's go ahead and listen now. So you can see how it's kind of jumping back and forth and that's in the pattern of the drums. But the issue here is that there is a lot of audio information inside of those drums and it's all triggering the LFO and that's not what we're looking to do. So if I click this gear icon right here, we can actually turn on the filter and the filter will allow me to lop off that higher end content that's causing those triggers to happen when I don't want them to. And I could just focus in on the kick. Now a good way to do this is by hitting the headphone icon here. And then with this bass soloed, let's go ahead and listen. And what we're gonna hear is the drums, which is the side chain trigger. And what we wanna do is lop off all of that high end content and just focus in on the drums. So now we got it. I can just hear the kick and the snare. So that's good. But let's say I don't want the snare to trigger it. I can actually pull up the level here. I'm gonna go ahead and click that gear icon. I'm gonna pull up the level and you can see the level coming in in the white here. And if in fact, let me go ahead and turn this back on so we can really hear it. So you can see that the kick is pushing it all the way up to the top, but that snare is, is coming down to around here. So if I take this target level and pull it up to here, the snare will no longer trigger the LFO over here. So you can actually see that the LFO or the envelope is being triggered just by the kick drum, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So that's essentially an effectively side chain there. And then of course we still have all those controls of the envelope, but Duck allows us to go one step further and get even better results. And that's with the crossover down here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and set it down fairly low. I only want the low end content, the subby end to get removed when the kick happens to allow that kick to happen freely without any frequency collisions. So the way to do that with crossover is turn it down fairly low. If you're really doing a precise thing, you'd want to go in and see the frequency range of your kick and then make your decision there. But I'm just going to go ahead and eyeball it or what's, how do you say ear ball it? I don't know. Um, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and use my ears to see right around where I want that crossover point to be. And then we have low and high values. And when it's all the way up like this, it means it's going to get fully compressed. So what I want to do is roll back on the compression or the volume shaping rather is a better way to put it because it's not compression, it's volume shaping using an envelope. And I'm going to pull down on the high here and I'm going to let those high frequencies pass by 
when the kick happens and just move that lower end content out of the way of the kick. So let's go ahead and do that while we're listening. Yeah, again, I'm gonna solo the bass. So you can hear how the high-end content is being allowed to pass by. And that's exactly what we're looking for. It sounds kind of wonky when we don't hear the drums, but it's a really good way to focus in on having it soloed to make any precise changes that you want. And once we do, if we go ahead and put the drums back in, And another cool thing that we can do here, if we click right here, we can say show sidechain on the graph and we can actually see the graph of the kick and make a decision where to put this little point right here inside of the envelope. So you see the kick is actually quite short. So I can easily bring this over like this and have more of that low end come in and make things sound a little bit more natural instead of pumpy. I'm not looking for pumpy here, remember, I'm just trying to make a mix better. Is that not genius? Being able to see the kick and make this uh, point be right around where you know the, the beef of the kick starts to roll off is just perfect. And of course, you know, maybe if we wanted to, we could add another point and bring it up even more. You know, we really want to lop off this bit, and then we want to kind of have it be gradual, come in like this. You know, we can really start to make some decisions and get it as precise as we want using duck. So that's with the duck. That's without. So a much cleaner mix. It's very obvious, even in some bad headphones that I'm using right now. So remember what's happening here. One, the envelope is being triggered by the kick drum because we've lopped off everything else by using the filter and then the trigger level. And then we are only ducking the low frequency content below 254 hertz, and we've used the envelope to make the envelope of that duck to be precisely the length of the kick and to fit the shape of the kick transients as well. So using those features of duck will give you more precise, higher quality side chaining easily, effectively, and efficiently. Hats off to the guys at Devious Machines that done it again with this one. Texture is one of my favorites from last year. Duck is going to be a new standout inside of my collection of VSTs, and I have a ton of them. So big ups to you guys. Definitely check out Duck if you can. Links in the video description to find out more. I'm Joshua Casper here for Plug and Boutique. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video.